And this is Cash Color Campus, a high-level conversation from LiveHipHopDaily.tv. And we are continuing with, the, with, continuing with the rest of our Atlanta City Market meets Cash Color Campus activation tonight. And I got my friend Daniel Bunton with, J, with Jay's Elevation here. Hey, Daniel. Hello, how are you? I'm good, man. Don't get shy now. Like, we, we, <laughs> I've got a chance to speak to you uh, all this year. We've actually had a great, we've had um, a, a, a great relationship working-wise so far, you know what I mean, with um, Jay's Elevation and Cash Color Campus. So I'm glad to finally have you in studio. I had you on Zoom. I had you over the phone. Um, you have never actually been in front of us sitting here doing this interview. Okay. So, hey, y'all. <laughs> All right. So, for those who don't know, because I've actually had a chance to get to know you, for those who aren't familiar with you, um, just tell us your name and tell us what you do. Um, my name is Danielle Bunton, and I'm owner and chief operating officer of Jay's Elevation. It's a hemp cannabis cultivation, processing, and manufacturing company out of Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, so, and you have actually a super unique story on how this all came about, including the name Jay's Elevation. Um, speak to us about how Jay's Elevation came to life. Like, what actually sparked your interest in getting into this field? Um, I just always liked cannabis, and I was, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just looking for ways to kind of get into the cannabis industry, yeah. and just after the research and kind of development of it, it was just kind of how you can get into this industry um, without spending over a million dollars. So it was just kind of the research and process of it and finding different avenues that I could get into the cannabis industry through. Yeah, and it's and I know also it's part of your educational background. Yeah, yeah. so um, I got different degrees. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I have a marketing degree, sports management, I have an agricultural degree, um, and that kind of took me to agribusiness and developing different businesses through farming and agricultural grants and help. Yeah. Now, it, it, we're speaking about spaces where, again, we're not going to see a whole lot of black faces. Um, and, and I'm glad to say that we've actually, we're starting to see some more now. Like, shout out to Green Toad, Hemp Farm, and, and, and brothers like that. They, um, brothers like that, they were on the show as well. And shout out to Verde Leaf. We're starting to see more. Um, what's it like being a black face in this space, in the hemp space? Um, at first, it was very interesting because you would only kind of black owner mm. so it's a difference between just being there and standing at a table for somebody yeah. but then when you tell them you own it and then you do everything in it they look at you kind of weird like why do you do it yeah. so it was just kind of getting in and understanding the lingo understanding like how they talk and kind of sliding your way in you know it's crazy you mentioned that because um right now they're going through Sean Kemp's dispensary is going through that right now. You know, like there was there was talk when the first and opened, everybody was going crazy because it looked like Sean Kemp was opening the dispensary. He owned it, and come to find out, he wasn't. He was ten percent owner, and somebody else was. At, he was literally just the face of this, of right? This. And you do see that a lot, you know, especially with um as we're going forward, you're gonna see a lot of black faces, but not necessarily black owners of said right. brands. So I'm sure it's, it's it's awkward when you meet somebody who's actually the owner and the face of said shit. Yeah, it's, it's different. <laughs> so um. Let's talk to us about the process that you go through when it comes to extraction. You know, um, I, when we spoke earlier, when we spoke a while ago, you had mentioned to me that it was ice hash that you use, that you yeah. use, correct. And I was thinking then I should ask you more about that. Like, why do you use ice hash? And what is ice, why is ice hash a special special process? So ice water hash is extracting the cannabinoids through um, water and agitation. So you get it down to a really low temperature, and then you start to agitate the water. Then you sieve it through different screens to get a finer grade, mm -hmm. and then it's really just more when I looked at hash it was more of a connoisseur way of extraction so you could get a really high level or you could get a level that you could put into a pain cream so and it was really safe and you I didn't blow up so a lot <laughs> a lot of ways that you extract is through alcohol and a lot of chemicals so um, through that process it's very flammable and just kind of thinking of like how you would do it on a small scale through a large scale it's just um, really not conducive to work with a lot of And it sounds like, would, I, would, would ice hash be a cleaner method of doing it's, that? It's very clean. Yeah. It'd be a, it, it sounds like it would be a cleaner method. So I'm pretty sure, I would shock more people wouldn't use it. It must be the more expensive version of it. Um, it is a, it's very time consuming. So you have to make sure that you dry it right to be able to sell to a commercial level. Um, it is a non-activated cannabinoid. So when a person gets it, they actually have to know how to use it to work with it. Okay. All right. So um, I love Jay, Jay's elevation down to the name. You know, it's, it's totally a family business. And um, explain. Matter of fact, I didn't get a chance to explain the name. Explain how the name Jay's elevation. 
So Jade is my daughter and Elevation is just my love for cannabis. So when I named my company, I was like, what would you look at every day and get up and go to work? And I'm my daughter and I love cannabis. So Jade's Elevation was kind of what we got. Yo, and your daughter's hands on with the process. Like yeah. she, she's learning how to grow. She has her own little plant. She could tell you whether or not your weed is bad or good. Yeah. <laughs> she, can. No, um, no joke, she can. No, she really can. She um, So that was kind of one of the other things that brought me to cannabis it was when i used to smoke a lot or different types or bad or good um she would come in and she would distinctively kind of know and didn't really like it so like she would come in and she'd be like that's that's not good mom that doesn't smell good um or she'll come in and she'll be like that smells so good it, it really smells good so she and she still does it like when we'll cut fresh flowers, she'll be like, man, just just let me smell the flowers. So she'll just hold them and she'll smell them and she does everything. So she's like the trimmer. She helps me water. Um, she does a lot of things. She can tell you if it's male or female. Um, so basically, she's my baby apprentice. That basically, paid. man. Basically, <laughs> she's definitely ready to take over the business as soon as possible. And ASAP. Was it was it something hard for you to do as far as um, integrating her into the business? You know, and I know occasionally it can be hard for people to try to get their children involved and things like that. Like, what was it hard for you to get Jade involved? Um, it's hard to keep her involved through the whole process. So yeah. she likes the starting and the end. Oh, like most people. Yeah, she doesn't, <laughs> she like she doesn't do well with like the watering or the maintenance, but like the trimming, she's super good at. Um, she loves to get the scissors and just go in and trim with me. So that's kind of what I just deemed her. She'll get paid for it. So she um, gets paid $5 <laughs> um, for trimming with me yeah. every time. Is that um, minimum wage? <laughs> Not to put you out there, but she, is that minimum wage? I don't think she's so. seven. Let me tell you, no, because my, my dad used to do that to me all the time. Like, my dad she's, literally wrote me a check for $13 seven. one time. She's seven. Mm, yeah, he, took, he got a, yeah, up till I was 13, he was doing stuff like that. Like, I mean, with the LLC, you are allowed to give your child $6,000 a year. So, I mean, $5 throughout slowly. the whole year. I'm not going to make us do math. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm a big fan. I ain't going to make us do that tonight. That's, I always thought it was dope, though, that you had your daughter involved. Because, I, like I say, to have somebody that young who actually could be a weed, a weed tester for you, like, literally, she could walk in this room and be like, mm -mm, that pack whack. <laughs> no, <laughs> and walk out. And walk out. That's crazy. Um, last time I spoke to you, you know, you have your own signature products. Um, speak to us about some of the signature products that Jay's Elevation actually rolls out. Because you do more than just consult other brands. Yes. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. our signature product is we started off with the Pain Cream Soothe. And then we moved forward to really working with the smokables. So, we have our ice water hash, our um, infused pre-roll, which is Jade Effects pre-roll. And it is a CBG, CBD now we have a Delta 8 blend to where we're giving you an increased effect of a heady high, but also a relaxation of a body high. So just kind of combining it for the people who don't want to be um, completely stoned. Yeah. So this is more for the mellow. You still got to work, but you may just want to kind of wind down at the end of the day. That's what's up, man. So, and when I last spoke to you, you said that the pre rolls were actually your favorite. Um, is that still true of your products, or you has any another, another one of your products captured your attention? So the nu the new one that I have is my D eight. Um, so that one is just kind of playing with the isolates and transforming it. Um, so I get to go in and just really work with balancing, changing CBD to THC to Delta 8. So it's just kind of more of a technical process, but that's kind of been my the most fun because you will have batches that are like terrible. Yeah. And then you'll have batches that are perfect. So you just got to kind of figure out your extraction process and how it flows through it. So I like that the most now because you just get to play with, do you have CBD or do you have TAC or do you have something that may be legal? Do you know, I like the fact that you're, you're a pioneer and um, right now we're watching a scene like even tomorrow. What is it? Um, Nas's show Smoke is coming up on BET. Yes. We're watching a scene now where mainstream conversations are now including cannabis, you know, and eventually you have to include conversations like these and, con and people like yourself. Um, what's it like knowing that you are that in that place right now, that you are a pioneer, that literally we're going to be looking back say five years from now, somebody's gonna say, you know what, um, Danielle actually inspired me to get into this, in, into this industry. Um, well, I hope that a lot of more black people get into this industry. Yeah. I hope when I'm sitting here, I am five years from now, is not just always me um, in a setting, 
um, hopefully is more people that beyond just wanting to be a grower, they want to really get into the business and get the licenses and get the um, insurance and really work beyond just saying that I can sell this on the street and I could probably make some money, but could we all turn around and make a huge maybe company yeah. and not just be the face of the company? Could we own it? Could we have more um, people with really strong names in the cannabis industry that's not funded by a ton of white people? Um, <laughs> so just that's what I hope to see and that's what I kind of hope it's moving towards. You know, and I, I'm, I'm fairly certain we're, we're moving towards that area. I always said that cannabis is one space where you being a celebrity doesn't necessarily make you important. You know, it it, 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 it it doesn't. Like we how many celebrity lines do we see celebrities in front of brands right. and they do nothing. You right. know what I'm saying? Like like it's really one of them places where it's, it's a level playing field depending on how what your hustle is and what your product is. So I do feel like we're go, we're to that place where you're gonna see everything you just mentioned, that that we're gonna get there. Um this year has generally been a lot, you know, um COVID has, best, has basically been a conversation I've had to have with all my business friends. Like, how have you actually been maintained? Like, I'll check on some people sometimes. Like, yo, you good? You know what I'm saying? Like, like how you've been maintaining? How have you been able to maintain the entire business, you know, from the farming to the cultivation to you even processing your own products? Like, how are you able to maintain that during this time where it's been so hard to get, get everything from help to products? Um, so the great part is that now... Under the 2018 Farm Bill, they allow us to get grants, loans, different things um, through the government. And that way, they have allowed us to now be listed as a farmer. So that allows us to open up to subsidies that the farmers, like the cow farmers or the meat processors or different things like that are allowed to apply for. So I've obtained a grant and also help from the SBA to keep me funding and also help me expand. So um, one avenue that I take is processing, and that is because a lot of people don't focus on processing. They give you kind of the most opening for federal money because they want you to be able to process the material that is in the area yeah. and also be able to sustain the farmers that are in the area too. So allowing you to get the equipment and different things, that allows you, instead of having to go to maybe Oregon or something like that, now you can source your flour and different things, but you're also able to process it in the state and keep the money in the state. So process is essential. But they were you were essential business like yeah, like, yeah back, you was yeah. actually needed to keep the environment going <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. okay that's what's up good to fucking know that <laughs> you were essential business during during 2020 uh what thinking going into 2021 because we're almost out of fourth quarter we're about to matter of fact you're gonna blink and it's gonna be first quarter 2021 right. in the second um what are your plans for 2021 if you can make any, I mean, we might be on shutdown next week. Well, for me, I love shutdown because we're going to do some research and genetic growing. Um, now we're working towards doing really low TAC counts, so we're complying. So after this year, they've transitioned to making him farmers go to a total THC content, meaning that when you read it, it can only be a certain amount in there throughout the whole plant. Um, so working on genetics that allow you to pass those tests comfortably um, and not have to like stress because with hemp, you have to worry about not turning it to marijuana. But that window is like this big. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times you are producing weed, um, but they just allow you on the testing to kind of go a little higher. But the following year, um, 2021, they'll start testing for that. So we're working on genetics that'll help us pass all those tests and be TAC compliant for the new year. Jay, what do you have for us tonight over there? I know you brought your table together. What's over there that yes. we can check out? So we have the Jaded Effects pre-rolls. Mm -hmm. um, we have our flour that we grew. We have some bath salts and our pan cream. Let me tell you, the, the pre-rolls are actually pretty good. I, I When I was going through... Early, early COVID was it February, March? I'm just sitting in the house. I literally lit one of those up to go to sleep, and it put me out. Like I actually needed that. So definitely, please check out the the her booth while we're here. Um, and Jay, I'm Jay. Excuse me, Danielle. Please tell us how they could learn more about Jay's Elevation. You know, whether or not you want to learn how to get actually into the hemp business, or you just want to see if you can get something from her as far as for products. Jay's Elevation dot com. Um, Jay's Elevation on IG. And depending on how um, Facebook loves me, it's Jay's <laughs> Elevation if they don't shut me down. <laughs> Man, you talk about a struggle we all go through. Yes. All go through. Like, like they shut down my advertising they shut me down like, like about two years ago. They don't even attempt it. Like, you yeah. ever get, try, to, try to hit their, um, what is it? 
Customer service? Yeah, and mm. you try to appeal it, and mm. they be like, you can't mm. appeal it. Mm. You, you've reached your limit. They yeah. just keep sending you the same form letter. Thank you very much for contacting us, but there's nothing we can do. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Danielle, for coming out. I want everybody to check out her, her, her booth while we're still here tonight. Um, thank you very much. You know, I'm, I'm finally got a chance to have you in the studio. No problem. Thank that. you for having me. No doubt. And that's Cash Color Canvas, a high level of conversation at livehiphopdaily.tv plus the Atlanta City Market.